Hi and welcome back to capexforextrading.com. In this video we're going to focus on the stochastics indicator which is a great tool to use when looking to recognize overbought and oversold areas of a trend. Now you can see in the bottom window here that the indicator is made up of two lines. One is called the percentage K line and the other is called the percentage D line. Now don't worry about what that means, you don't really need to know about that. But one thing you do need to bear in mind is that the standard setting for stochastics is 14, 3, 3. So the 14 is relative to the number of last trading sessions. So when we have the setting of 14, the indicator will take into account the last 14 sessions in your chart. And the two threes that we see at the end here are basically the measurements for, or the settings rather, for the percentage K and for the percentage D line. Now you will see on the right hand side here a vertical scale that ranges from 0 to 100 but you will also see a couple of levels emphasized. That, those levels are 20 and 80 and to simplify everything when the stochastics indicator is above 80 that means that the trend is overbought and when it's below 20 it means that the trend is oversold. However, we do get a lot of false measurements so what we need to do with the stochastics indicator is combine it with another one. So in order to increase the reliability of the stochastics indicator, we need to use a 200 period exponential moving average. And in general terms, when the exponential moving average is sloping upwards and prices are above it, we're looking to trade in the upwards direction. However, when the EMA is sloping downwards and prices are below it, we're looking to trade in the downwards direction. So by combining the stochastics indicator and the 200 EMA, we're not looking to trade against the trend. We're only looking to trade in the direction of the trend itself. So when we're trading in an uptrend, the first thing we're looking for, other than the prices being above the 200 EMA, are pullbacks. Now pullbacks are simply areas of the uptrend where the uptrend is kind of running out of steam and is looking to regather its strength to, to continue back in the upwards direction. So just with a couple of examples, we've got an uptrend here, and then we've got a pullback there, and then a continuation back in the upwards direction. Then we've got another pullback, and another continuation back in the upwards direction. Then we've got another pullback here, and then another continuation in the upwards direction, and so on. So these pullbacks are actually really important for us when we're looking to trade stochastics. Um, and what we need to see are oversold positions within those pullbacks in order to take an entry for a continuation back in the upwards direction. So I'll explain that a little bit better. So we've got this pullback, this pullback area here. The uptrend that we're focusing on is this. So we've got this pullback here and at the same time the stochastics indicator you can see is showing an oversold position. Great, so I'm just going to place a little vertical line there to, uh, to emphasize that for us. Now the one thing that we need to do before we take that trade is to make sure that the low in our price chart is a higher low to the previous low where the condition was oversold. So you can see that the last oversold condition, it wasn't this here, it was here. Okay, so this is our oversold position. So we've got oversold position number one and we've got an oversold position number two. You can see that the lows, if I join them up, I'm just going to move these out of the way so it's a little bit clearer to see. We've got the lows joined up now, one, two. This second low is higher than this low, which means that the continuation is imminent. So this is where we take our trade. However, don't just take the trade as soon as the oversold position occurs for the second time round. You need to wait for the lines to cross back over the 20 line and make sure that the percentage K and the percentage D lines have crossed over as well. And you can see how quickly that shot back up in the upwards direction because the next target is the next major previous high so our target will be this okay and that's there how many pips have we've got here we've got 175 pips in literally in a day and that's how you would use the stochastics indicator to trade in the upwards direction the same rule applies when we're trading in the downwards direction but in reverse right so what we've got here um, is a downtrend and then a major pullback and then a continu continuation back in a downwards direction. Now we've got two oversold positions here. We've got one here and one here. And the highs that correlate with those two positions is high number one here 
and high number two here. So our 200 EMA is still sloping downwards and prices are trading below it and that's great. So what we're looking for is for that second high, so sorry, that second low to be below that first low in conjunction with the overbought positions that we're seeing in a stochastics indicator. So we wait for the cross under the 80 line now and we would enter in this candle here and our target is the previous low. Okay, so that is simply how you trade that. In terms of our stop losses, when we're trading, let me just delete this out of the way, um, we've got a high here, the stop loss is simply just a few pips above that high or if you want to give your trade a lot more room, then you need to just look at the next previous high, which is this one here, and just place your stop loss just a few pips below, above that. If we take the same trade that, um, in terms of our example that we used earlier, we would take either or put a stop loss either in this area, just a few pips below the low, or we would look for the next lower low, and we would place place a stop just a few pips below it to give our trade give our trade a bit more room to move. Now the second way in which we can use the stochastics indicator is by using divergence. And remember from our previous videos, divergence is simply where this the indicator and the prices are trading into separate opposite directions. So when we trade, when we use divergence, we don't actually need the um, the 200 EMA. So I'm just going to delete that out of the way. Um, and as you can see here, what we've got are two, one, two, three rather. We've got two highs that are pretty much kind of halted at the same level. But the stochastics indicator is trending downwards. Okay, so despite the fact that we've got highs that are at the same level at the top here, the stochastics indicator is showing us that the strength of those highs is completely decreasing. So the trade or the the entry that we would take would be at this level here, which is relative to this lower high in the stochastics indicator. And our target is simply the next previous low, which is this low here. So in terms of our profit, we're looking at about 104 pips with a stop loss that's simply above the high that you traded of 31 pips. So in terms of our risk reward, that is a, a very, very good trade to take. And the last way in which we can use this indicator is by identifying trend line breaks in the ch in the price chart. So if we get just draw a line here that basically identifies for us an uptrend. So we've got a hit here and a hit here. Then we've got a trend line break here in this area. The only thing that we need to we need the stochastics indicator to do for us is tell us is this fall of prices here has it come from an overbought stochastics position? And if we look at the high here and then relate that to the stochastics indicator, you can see that yes, it has. It's already crossed above 80 before and now it's crossed back under 80. So as soon as we get this breakdown of this trend line, we take our trade. And the target, as usual, is the next previous low. And that's that here. In fact, make sure just a few pips above the next previous low. Uh, just to make sure that you're not too greedy and this is our profit area and our target in this in this instance was 87 pips and our stop loss is just a few pips above our entry and this is how you would trade it using trend line breaks okay so that concludes this lesson um, if you do have any comments or any questions we'd love to hear from you so please put them in the boxes below um, otherwise if you haven't done so already please uh, subscribe to our channel or follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter or Google+. And we shall see you for the next lesson.